Hey, what's good, guys? I am stupid, and this is Fire Emblem Fates Lunatic Conquest. So, you may notice that I am now a paladin. The reason for that is because... <laughs> by using the, uh, the My House or the My Castle or whatever, we got all the way up to A rank with Parry. Once you do that... Uh, you can use a friendship seal to steal the class of anybody that dude has an A rank with. Of the same gender at any rate. Now, the reason that I cannot show this is because I saved over my file. And I... I didn't want to play through Percy's map again. I feel like we did pretty good, and I want all that money, man. So sorry, just that's all I did. That's all I did. I changed Dude over to a Paladin. I picked that over Great Knight because I still want the move, and also it has a better speed cap, which could matter in doubling the final boss. It may or may not. It really just depends. Great Knight would have been uh, great, I guess, because of Luna. And it does work on the final boss. And with Luna and Dragon Fang, on top of the Great Knight just having a better strength cap, that would be a pretty good chance to just clown the final boss immediately. But, I would rather have the reliability to double them. And of course there's things like Rallyman and Azura, Parups, etc, etc. But you need 35 attack speed to even do it. And I just, I don't want to risk anything. Because it'll be way, way harder if I can't double this guy. Than it would be to just do the last damage through Chip. You know, so that's why this is the way it is. I also used an arm scroll because... Uh, we're, we're building up sword rank, basically. You might remember yeah, a long time ago when Dude was a sword user. I know, crazy. But we're gonna need that as well, because the only way to bypass one of the final boss's skills, or at least reduce the effect of it, is to use the Yato. So, we need a sword using class for that, otherwise it's just gonna be way, way harder. So I figure Paladin- no, not Store. Hello. Other than that, last time we did Percy's Paralogue, I think we did pretty well, like I was saying. 10,000 gold, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, you guys were telling me some pretty interesting trivia about that, though, and I, I love that sort of thing, first of all. But apparently, in the Japanese version, Percy's Wyvern is a reference to Macalus. I, I think it's just straight-up named Macalus, based on what you guys were saying. And that is a weird localization change. I don't understand that. It's not as if Shadow Dragon didn't come out in the West. So surely people would have got that reference. That almost makes me kind of think that maybe the, maybe the team behind this game didn't fully understand the lore or something because that, that's just something that doesn't seem to make sense why would you why, why would you change that you know I, I I can't really get behind that one honestly nothing really wrong with the name ace but if it was if it was supposed to be a reference to the series why not just leave that you know what I mean pretty strange in my opinion also as if the deep realms were not bad enough somebody pointed out the fact that some of the races in this game are supposed to age super slowly right uh, specifically the Kitsune, right? A uh, Selkie, right? Yeah, so Kitten, that asshole fox dude that we murdered forever ago and made a bunch of hats out of, that dude has a kid named Selkie, right? And she appears as like a, like a young adult, like basically everybody else, okay. The problem with that is that for that to be the case, <laughs> for that to be the case, she would have had to be there for thousands and thousands of years. Good God, what are these people doing with their kids? And this is exactly the reason that I hate any kind of time wankery in games, just in general. Now, I, I said that before, and somebody did bring up a few decent examples. Uh, Chrono Trigger. That's the main one that sticks out to me, because they actually kind of do sort of address a lot of the major issues with time travel in that game. Uh, not directly, not directly. That's not really until the sequel that they get into that, but... For anybody who doesn't know, the game revolves around time travel entirely. But you can never go back to the same point, if that makes sense. So let's say I go a year in the past to noon or whatever. In that game, you couldn't go back to a year in the past at noon if you've already been there. Because in theory, there would be two of your team running around, if that makes sense. And the game actually does acknowledge this fact because there's one specific instance where you go back to a point where you have already been. And you can actually see your team there. It's kind of trippy. So that was a game that pulled it off. Uh, I think they also brought up Legend of Zelda, which... Uh, uh, that one really more sidesteps it by saying, okay, now there's two timelines. So whatever, you know, it's not really it's not really a big issue. But this game, man, it's all over the place. And here's another one that <laughs> nobody really brought up, but I was thinking about this because I have too much time on my hands, I guess. But if time is totally irrelevant inside the Deep Realms, right, there's two issues with that. One, how is it that we don't return to the exact same point from which we left? That's a huge problem in and of itself, because that it, it has to be. It, we would have to, right? How can we how can we jump forward in time? Maybe it just doesn't show that. Okay, 
So let's let's say that one makes sense. But if you want to look past that one, here's a bigger issue, okay? If time is more or less irrelevant inside this realm, why don't we just train here for like a year? We wouldn't really look any older or anything like that, because it would only be a year, right? So we would look basically the same. But if we just sat here and power leveled, couldn't we have ended the game on map one? I mean, this whole conflict takes place over like, what? A few months, maybe? And look at how much stronger we are compared to the beginning of the game. Yeah, we wouldn't be fighting as strong of enemies, but once we got Xander, man, if we just sat down and, like, sparred with him every day nonstop, I'm pretty sure that Korn could solo the rest of the game. <laughs> so, uh, whoops. This is exactly why time travel sucks. We could do these supports or we could kick Iago's ass. I really only have to do Mozu and, uh, Ye Olden La Slow. But they can get to S support even if I, even if we don't do it, like, right now. And I really want to murder Iago, man. This guy's keeping me away from critical mode. Or the great Ace of Turtles. Man, there's all these other games. And Iago's sitting here wasting my time. Let's just go kill him. That's what I say. <laughs> For chapter 26, Treason. Nor now controls the Hoshinan capital, but the real battle is just beginning. The children of Nor stand together to face a treacherous enemy. This map is pretty dang tough. Definitely harder than the last one, that's for sure. That is for sure. And honestly, I feel like we're about at that point in this game where, uh... Really anything going wrong can lead to a death like... Like that, man. Instantly. Instantly. And... Oh, well, we've got, we've got the all-important story. I'll get back to that in a second. Iago, is that the throne room up ahead? Why, yes. Why, yes, my liege. Nothing stands in our way. The kingdom of Hoshino is all yours. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. This guy. The time has finally come. I have awaited for this moment for decades. Upon decades. <sighs> yes, father. Please sit on the throne and end this game already. Let us admire you in your first moments as the conqueror of Hoshino. No. No, stay right there. Huh? Huh? Listen well. I must first consult the sacred mythical dragon, Anankos. So he can do that from anywhere, or like... I thought that the only- well, hmm. Nah, never mind, never mind. I'll buy it. No one may enter the throne room until I say so. Yes. Understood. <laughs> <laughs> like golly. I just... <sighs> I feel like the game would have just been better without Garon. <laughs> at all like i don't know man i just th this guy right here is the main reason that i can't take this seriously i've come to realize because every time the game sets something up or or tries to be interesting here comes the mustache twirler <laughs> and it just it just drags everything down also i've just realized does he only dye one part of his beard is that what that is or what what's up with his portrait actually yeah wait <laughs> I have all kinds of problems with this guy. I shall be remembered forever as the king who conquered the world. Sure you will, bud. Sure you will, bud. Dude. Yeah. It's all right, Azura. Once he's done praying to his god, we'll be allowed to join him in the throne room. Then everyone will finally see his true form. After all we've endured, waiting just a few moments longer is nothing. Uh. You're right, it's almost time. Oh. Relax, everyone. Father will give us permission to enter any minute now. The fighting is finally over. No more maps. <laughs> We're done. This is it. End game. Let's lay down our weapons and rest easy for a change. Uh -huh. Dude, behind you. <gasps> huh? He does not have thunder. That's bullshit. Oh, drat. Hi, mist. What a slithery little snake you are. Don't be reckless. What are you doing, Iago? Was that a new voice clip just for this one scene? I think it was. Why? <laughs> Why? Why did you attack dude? What am I doing? Is it not I who should be asking that question? What exactly do you think you're doing, lady dude? Huh? What are you talking about? Um. Princess Hinoka is alive and well. Do you deny it? Uh? That's, that's nonsense. You have no proof. Let me explain. Oh? While you were fighting Prince Ryoma, I had soldiers search the castle grounds. What do you think they found? Surprise, surprise! Princess Hinoka with a small group quietly escaping from the back. Shit. <laughs> I see. 
You don't seem surprised, young princess. I take your silence as a confession. You let her escape, didn't you? Such betrayal is an act of treason, and the only possible punishment is death. As such, I think I'll go ahead and take your pathetic little life myself. Good luck, dude, with your stats. <laughs> no lie, this guy is actually kind of a pushover. It's, it's the math that's the problem. Let's not run on that. No. Y yes. No. Yes. I won't allow it. As though I would ever let that happen. Uh? Xander. Oh. Out of my way, Prince Xander. Otherwise, you too will be branded a traitor and executed for your crime. Hmm. So be it. If you wish to kill Dude, you will first have to defeat me. However, know that I do not intend to go down without a fight. Mm -hmm. what, what do you mean? Oh. I challenge you to a duel, Iago. But I don't even have my deck. I've had about enough of your shit. You're a disgrace to the great... <laughs> I'm sorry. That's how I feel. I don't know, man. <laughs> you are a disgrace to the great kingdom of Nor. But that ends today. If you choose not to repent, the only fate left for you is to die by my blade. As Crown Prince of Nor, I am taking back my kingdom 26 chapters into the game. I'll fight too. Count me in. I've long hoped for the chance to express my discontent with Iago's dirty schemes. If you're gonna take him down, allow me to share in the pleasure. What? Ah, uh, Leo, my man. Y you d don't intend to kill me, do you? Your king's trusted general? That's not very becoming of a Denorian royal, now is it? Hmm. Say what you will, coward. Our father is not here to protect his lapdog. We'll tell him you were murdered by some remaining Hoshidin rebels. How tragic. <laughs> Alright, I kinda like that. So, like, mm, <laughs> Sometimes the game hits the mark, I think. Sometimes. What? No, that's deceitful. It's traitorous. It's... it's... Actually, it's exactly what I would do. That's genius! <laughs> Who are you to judge us? You and Hans have done nothing but awful things to innocent people for years. And what's more, you've been openly mean to do. <laughs> worst of all, yeah, worst of all, you've been rude to Corrin once or twice. I've always hated you two. It's time to pay you back for being such big jerks. Well, well perhaps I don't feel as strongly as our little sister Elise here. But anyone who tries to hurt my darling dude most certainly deserves death. It's only fair. You're ready to die now, I hope. Oh, oh God. No, not Camilla. Lady Elise. <laughs> Lady Camilla. This is bad. This? Yeah, Hans doesn't give up. He doesn't give a damn. Are you traitors really turning your blades against your own? Fine then, bring it on! <laughs> I don't care if you're a prince or a princess. You're weak, all of you. Let's see how you feel about that by the end of this. It seems the only way to settle this is with a battle. Do not expect me to hold back. Yes, me, the dancer. Though I do not regret returning to Nor, I will not stand idly by while you desecrate the kingdom I grew up in. We're not done yet! If it's a fight you want, Hans, it's a fight you're gonna get. I always try to avoid needless violence, but there's an exception to every rule. You wanna see me act more like you? Like a merciless killer? Then watch this. You may be on the side of Nora, but I'll punish you all the same. Everything's okay. Don't worry, dude. We all share your sentiment, and we have your back. You are still the leader of this army, and we are awaiting your orders. You have plotted the course, little princess. Give the word, and we shall act upon it. Right. Aye, aye. Everyone, ready your weapons. These men have employed cowardly tactics to hurt innocent people. They have destroyed the reputation of our beloved kingdom. They are traitors and they will pay for their crimes with their lives. Hurry, my friends. It's time to obliterate the king's army and take back Nor. Why didn't we do this sooner, though? <laughs> See, that's the thing, though, because if Xander had this great idea to just say Hoshino is responsible for Iago's death, I feel like we could have done this, oh, I don't know, immediately? <laughs> immediately. All right, so let's let's just do this. Honestly, so we need you there, you here, you here. I'll explain this in a second, but it all makes sense. Trust me, trust me. There's a there's a method to this madness. I assure you. Uh, no, we don't need you there. Oh yeah, we're actually gonna do the Silas Selena thing. Let's see if that works out. I hope so. I should be able to get it. I'm like 99% sure that I'll be able to get it. But uh, it's gonna be really close. <laughs> it's gonna be really really close. Good thing Silas is able to actually put the world on his back for this map, because he's going to be really important. Now, the first problem with this map <laughs> is this room right here. We may as well break it down room by room, I suppose. So there's a bunch of heroes, right? And wouldn't you know it, every single one. And I do mean every single one as a Weirm Slayer. Now, you may have noticed. You may have noticed. However, <laughs> my entire team is goddamn dragons. <laughs> Almost everybody. 
So in order to beat this room, we, we literally can only allow these two on the left to survive. We're gonna push right, because this room is horseshit. Why would you ever go left? I can't, seriously, I'm sitting here racking my brain trying to figure out any way, any way at all that this way makes sense. And uh, it really just doesn't. <laughs> I assume that when people say they don't like this map, it's because they tried to go left, <laughs> honestly. Because that would definitely do it for me. If I thought for sure that I needed to go left, you don't. I forget what's in here, by the way, but I think it's like a spy Yumi. I think it's a spy weapon of some kind, but it does not matter because it's trash. It's trash. It would be trash no matter what. Let alone having to deal with this, which is probably a worse formation than anything else in the entire game. Like, no lie. This is this is absurd. Oh, there's one of them without Wary Fighter, I guess, so there's that. But regardless, most of these guys have Wary Fighter and Counter Magic. Two of them have Poison Strikes, so... They can just hit you five tiles away with a really strong attack and murder you with 20% more. You can't even really tank it that well because, again, Poison Strike. Not to mention they have 51 attack to begin with. I don't know how well even Benny is tanking that. I would imagine he would take a good 10, probably, at least. And 20% more on top of that. And if that wasn't bad enough, they also all have counter magic. I'm pretty sure all of them do, right? Yeah. And seal defense. Uh, underdog as well, just to make it a little bit more annoying, I guess, because, hey, what are hit rates? In case you guys, plus 15 hit or avoid if you're lo a lower level. In fairness, these guys are level 37, so I guess it's not that likely. But still, like, why? <laughs> why? And again, you can't take these guys out in the same way as the first because they have counter magic and you will probably die even through lightning, I would imagine. Not to mention the threshold for that is absurd. You would basically have to be a Tome Fair Sorcerer, I think. So yeah, no thanks. We're not going that way. There's no reason to. And over here is a room of a billion mages. They're all really terrifying, but we're going to murder them all on player base. So it's not going to be that much of an issue. Uh, this guy actually does have Tome Fair, so that's pretty scary. And also Lightning. To me, that says never, ever, ever let him get a turn. Because Lightning on enemy face with Tome Fair is no joke. He's coming at you with 41 attack, hitting res. Not to mention if he can get like a dual attack or something. And this guy with the Ginugagap. I assume that's how you say that. He's annoying because he has inspiration, but we can kill him very easily. Down here in this final room is Hans. We're just kind of talking about the things we have to do, I guess. We have to do this right side, which you'll see in a second. And also, because we're going the right side, that does mean we're going to have to deal with these generals first. More likely than not, what's going to happen is Camilla is going to break down the door as the only one in range. A few of them should actually kill themselves on her because, believe it or not, she can still do this. What's interesting about this, though, uh, to a math nerd such as myself, I suppose, is that she has just enough attack to do this with max strength. As if they sat down and figured out exactly how strong Camilla could be and then made damn sure that these guys would be well within her range. <laughs> I think Rallyman just gives her a little bit more leeway, but we're gonna do that anyways because there's also... Well, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, in this room, there are two free stabs, which is part of the gimmick on this map. There's lots of status. Lots of status. Uh, these Berserkers are obviously horrifying because regardless of skill, they can just make me reset because they are Berserkers and, th and they can just create you. They can just create you. So, God, I, I really don't like plus crit enemies. Killer weapons are one thing because you can almost make the argument that it's supposed to be a consideration, right? You're supposed to see a killing edge or whatever and say, okay, well, I want to kill this guy from rain. Or I want to... Use somebody who's really tanky so that I can survive the hit. But with Lunatic Mode, in more recent games, being as ridiculously hard as it is, nobody's surviving a crit. Especially not, especially not with a killer weapon, but these guys don't have those, thankfully. But nobody's really surviving this crit. Even Camilla will die with her damn near 40 defense. And also, there's this guy with the Brave Axe. He's pretty horrifying. We can actually, I, I think we can deal with him. And there's Hands himself as well. The Orgelmir is, or however you say that, the Orgel, the Orgel, or this axe is the s rig axe in this game, and nobody can use it, because the only way to do that is to grind, I think, or like use weapon rank scrolls, just for the sake of getting s rank, because otherwise it's really not going to happen unless you had like Camilla as a Berserker the whole game. Only Berserkers can hit s rank in axes. In fact, every weapon type is like that, where there's only one class that can actually get to s rank, and in Axe's cases, that class is Berserker. Again, though, really, Camilla is the only viable user of that. And that would only be if you kind of did what I did. Marry her to Arthur, that is, or get her A-plus with Charlotte. Something, just any way to get her over to Berserker. 
because I really do not see anybody else getting enough combat to ever use this. The only other alternative is again to use a weapon rank scroll, an arm scroll, I mean. But why? Why is that necessary in order to actually use this weapon? Why do I have to burn an arm scroll? Those are expensive and rare. So that's, that's kind of bullshit in my opinion, honestly. There's no excuse. There's no excuse. This weapon is basically useless and I'm probably selling it because it's worth money. Because I can, I'll never be able to use it. And here is Iago, the man of the hour. Now, all of the staff users on this map share this ability right here with Iago. Staff Savant. Unit can attack with staves without expending a use. Sets minimum range to 1 to 10. Which, I love this ability. Yeah, I said I love this ability. I, <laughs> I love anything that makes you not turtle. And that's exactly what this is. You will never stall these guys out. You cannot. So you need to... You need to counteract it with intelligence, not with time. Not with time, and I think that that's the big difference here. Me personally, I'm all about mechanics that try to force the player to play better. Without something like this, I could simply park two units right here, wait these out, and be done with it. I could put somebody right here at the start of the map, I don't even have to go anywhere, and I can neuter Iago. But because of Staff Savant, that is not a possibility. This is a good ability, in my opinion. This is, this is something that I really hope that they bring back because it forces, it forces you to play better. That's all there is to it. It, it. Because now it's a consideration, always. There is no easy way out. You just have to get good enough to deal with it. I know it definitely makes it harder. Don't get me wrong. Oh yeah, it makes it way harder. Way harder. But it's called lunatic mode, man. <laughs> it should be. It should be hard, in my opinion. And Staff Savant is a very good way to do that. I don't think it's unfair in the slightest. Uh, the only really weird part about it is that 1 to 10 thing. I I mean, it's kind of weird because you can't do it yourself. And if not for the fact that it makes Staffs unbreakable, I would almost say it should be a player skill. But I think that overall, this is the better way to do it. Or maybe if they bring it back, bring the Staff Savant part, like the range increasing part. But then make a separate ability that makes the staffs unbreakable. Because this combo is... It's necessary. It's necessary, in my opinion. Because otherwise this map would be a joke, no lie. Especially... Especially considering that every staff user, again, has it on this map. There's an entrap jig over here. This is another good reason to not go this way. And I'm pretty sure that every maid does, in fact, have a steed of staff of some kind. Yeah, and traps, hexing rod. Oh, she dies immediately because of that, by the way. And the other, the other interesting thing about Iago is that you see he has four stabs here, and you might wonder to yourself, man, how do I deal with that? He could use anything he wants. Well, fortunately, the game was nice enough to think of that, and he uses the stabs in his inventory in the order they appear. So first he will use in feeble, then freeze, then silence, then hexing rod, in that order every time. However, even if you missed the turn that he would have used a certain staff, like, okay, so on turn one, he will use Enfeeble. On turn two, he will use Freeze. But let's say I'm not in range for Freeze. Even if he doesn't use it, he will then proceed on to Silence. And again, if I'm out of range of Silence, he would then, on the next turn, proceed to use Hexing Rod. And then back to Enfeeble. So keep that in mind. It definitely makes it a lot easier to know that. Yeah, I really don't think it's unfair. And I think that the way that they have decided to go about this is the best possible way that they could have. I'm actually not sure if other staff users do the same thing. Because I remember Sakura had a few stabs, a few different ones. She had both the Silence and a Freeze. I'm not sure if it depends on what turn you get into a range or not. But I do know for a fact Iago uh, really only considers what turn it is. So that's Enfeeble on turn 1, 5, 9, and so on. Freeze on 2, 6, 10, and so on. Silence on 3, 7, 11, and so on. Hexing Rod on 4, 8, 12, and so on. We're not going to be here for 12 turns. Well, time for some good news, bad news, everyone. Good news is you will never see me forget to heal Mozu. Bad news is I was recording for like 10 minutes and <laughs> there was no audio for some reason. I really hate Audacity and OBS. I really wish that DX Tori would just work with my 3DS, let's say. <laughs> that would just be so much better, honestly. Because the problem with doing things the way I do is that the audio and the dang old... All right, animations have to come back on. The audio and the, the game audio are not recorded on the same software, which, it's really annoying. <laughs> it really is. Probably what led to that little bit of desync in that last part, so my bad for all of that and whatnot. 
Also, for some reason, <laughs> there was just seven minutes of dead screen at the end of that, and I do apologize. I have no idea why that is. I have no idea why that was at all. The only thing on the timeline for that video was, like, some event markers that weren't even in use. So I don't understand why Sony Vegas decided that that explicitly needed to be shown for whatever reason. But hey, whatever. At any rate, we are going to blow through this room again. Not that you guys saw the first time. God damn it. <laughs> We need to kill all of these guys. Every single one of them has to die because there is a Weirm Slayer on each and every single one of them. Every single one. That is kind of an issue, as you may imagine. So let's just get to it. Let's blow these guys all the way back. Dual club. Why does this guy have no chance to do anything to me? <laughs> like, what the hell? Camilla is super, super broken. I don't know if I've mentioned that before or not, but here we are. She actually takes zero from all of these guys just about... Uh, assuming that she would dodge, which she would, so I'm not necessarily worried about her, particularly. It's just kind of the rest of my guys, in all honesty. Now with Bozu, she's got... I, I gave her the skill and the luck tonic because this guy is already sketchy enough as is. Now, he does have Aegis, which would cut in half damage from bow strikes. However, as you can see, a 28 and a 14 would still kill him. So, the only th way that we don't kill him is if he gets two Aegis or we miss. Now, we have a better chance to crit than any of that stuff happening, but no doubt since I'm recording... No? Okay, now we just need to not miss. Oh my god, no way. Some kind of glitch, perhaps. <laughs> we got him, though. We got him. Moses all the way up to level 16. Let's get this level. There we go. Yeah. Not bad. I, I actually don't think I brought up what her skill is that she got at level 15, by the way, but it is called... Amaterasu, and it's actually pretty decent. 20% of your HP is restored to any ally within two spaces at the start of your turn. Not, like, super amazing, but if you stack that with other skills, I can see that getting pretty crazy, uh, pretty quickly. Now, the reason that this whole situation is so dire is that these guys at the beginning uh, frequently carry the counter skill. The first four do, in fact. It's only the two, the, not sword masters, the two heroes on the sides actually don't, but the ones that start in the middle all do. Uh, we still need to take the damage though, unfortunately. Oh, I should have moved Ophelia first, yeah. It's a minor little thing, it's actually not going to matter at all. But technically the move was to move Ophelia so that she would not be giving Malefic Aura to Elise. It's not like it matters, whatever, whatever. Let's blow this guy up. Now, the only real issue that can happen with Ophelia is if she missed. Otherwise, she is totally safe. Because we have given Iago more than enough people who would be better targets for that in people's step. Ophelia has decent enough res, especially after that rally from Rally Man. And, uh, <laughs> it's just occurred to me. His name is Jin. Every map we use tonics. The thing carrying me is Jin and Tonic. There you go. Pun not needed. The game's gonna do it for me. Now, <laughs> Silas, kill him. Murder this chick. She has the hexing rod and we're not about to take that. There's not a chance in the world. Not a chance in the world that I'm about to sit back and let that happen. We do need to get hit though, actually, because if we don't, then Elise will not get entrapped. Or, or Elise will get entrapped, I mean. Silas needs to get hit though so we can take the debuff, which is gonna both lower his resistance to the point that those sorcerers can kill him, as well as make it easier for the mages to hit si We need that. We actually need that. <laughs> because if we don't have that, then the mages don't move. If the mages don't move, I cannot kill them because they are not in range. And if they are not in range, I cannot go into that room. And God damn it, I hate, I hate Fates hit rates so much. I do. I do. Because of this exact reason. That's kind of the problem with this game being as difficult as it is. Because, really, anything going wrong is a death sentence at this point and granted if you play intelligently it's not likely that things go wrong but that entrap missing for example what was i supposed to do about that like I, how could i have how could i have avoided that oh, we'll get back to we'll get back to ophelia the broken here in a second because her skill setup is pretty ridiculous right now and it can't be more ridiculous i just don't have the levels but at any rate, because these guys didn't move, I can't actually kill them without being in range of Iago, and he's going to freeze me, and I can't have that because I need everybody in order to clear this room. So, until Silas gets entrapped, we are basically SOL. Be right back. God, can you believe it? Losing a run to a dodge. When have you ever seen that? <laughs> this is why you guys are subscribed, right? You would never see this anywhere else. Okay, that's what needed to happen. <laughs> yeah, Silas needs to be in there because now these guys will move. 
He's gonna take literally everything, but that's fine. <laughs> it's totally fine. Now, we can actually proceed, I do believe. You can see right there, though, even though Ophelia is gonna take everything with her face, greatest swordmaster of all time, it does not matter. She survives easily. Easily. I can't believe how good this level up is. <laughs> I really can't. Now, what I was starting to say is that Ophelia's skill setup right now is actually batshit crazy because she's getting, well, she was getting plus 12. Now she's actually only getting plus 10 because I think I want the other skills more, but that's only the half of it because what you could do if you had more levels to spirit than I do, you could take her through Master of Arms too and pick up Life and Death. And then she could have Trample, Sword Fair, Life and Death, Advantage, Malefic Aura for a nice plus 22. I guess it doesn't have to be a Sword Fair. Tome Fair is honestly the better bet because you could also use Calamity Gain, which would be really nice because then you would probably be able to instantly kill ninjas. She can gimp basically everything in the game with that setup because she's so damn strong as is. It's like, why not make her even stronger? And she's one of the best units to make use of something like that. I don't, you could probably argue Odin, but let's be honest. Of the two, who do you think is better? Really? <laughs> really though. It's gotta be Ophelia, man. So we're gonna take Jin so that this way we can separate ourselves as much as possible at this point. Uh, by the way, every single rally that I hit Mosey with on the first turn was necessary to ensure that that hero would almost always die. That's why I needed to make sure she got in on that fancy footwork, otherwise there was a chance for him to survive with Aegis. Just thought I would clarify that. I don't think I brought that up. Bit I. At any rate, we're gonna lunge this guy. We have to lunge this guy. That crit might be worse. Actually, it does not make any difference, I do not believe. Yeah, it really doesn't. So, we're gonna do that. Now Moses is gonna shoot this guy to death. Thankfully, she has a 100% hit rate. And I gotta say, that is something... No, we're actually gonna use the suit and arrows. That's right. That's why I brought these, because I want her to get the gauge. I need her to get the gauge, basically. Uh, that is something, though, that is pretty frustrating about this game at this point. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, even a single miss is basically it. Honestly. Even a single miss at the wrong time is basically it in any Fire Emblem game. True. But, because this game is so goddamn hard, <laughs> it seems like every moment is always the wrong time. Every moment is the wrong time to miss. And that's just, I don't know, I really wish they would just stick with True Hit because of this. I don't think you guys heard me rant about this, did you? No, because that was in the that was in the run that didn't decide to record. Don't worry, I literally made it up to this mage room, so you didn't miss anything particularly spectacular with that. Oh yeah, animations can come back on, my bad. I'll, I'll pop those back on here. But I really just wish they would use True Hit because it is, honest to God, the only system that really rewards the player for taking risks. If higher hits are high, and lower hits are lower, then you can plan your entire gameplay around that, and you would, for example, know that a 90% chance has almost no opportunity to miss at all. So, okay, so for anybody who is not already familiar with what True Hit is, basically, the way that it works in some Fire Emblem games, the oldest ones at that, everything before Fire Emblem 6 specifically, when trying to determine a hit, it would only roll one number. By the way, this is exactly why I unpaired Jin right here, so that I can just repair him if he got froze. It also made the best possible target, uh, as opposed to Ophelia, basically. So that is why that happened as a dude. As I was saying, though, in the oldest games, your hit rate was what it said, right? So if I'm playing Fire Emblem 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever, a 90 is a 90. If I'm playing a Fire Emblem from Fire Emblem 6 all the way up until Fire Emblem Awakening, a 90 is actually much closer to a 99. So I, as an informed player, can decide that a 90, I, I can decide that a 90% accuracy shot is very, very heavily in my favor. Do not forget to heal most of this time, goddamn. Jesus, there we go. But because I know that a 90 is basically a 99, I can take a lot more risks than I can in a game like this, where a 90 quite honestly feels like a 90. I know that you guys did post that very helpful chart, but honest to God, I feel like I don't know, it just really feels like there's more to it. I know personal experience means absolutely nothing, especially considering that I am fairly confident that the original formula was determined basically by uh, gathering empirical data, so quite literally another person's experience kind of determined the hit rates. Uh, and it, it ended up being very close to what it actually was, but I digress. Bottom line, you can miss in this game so easily that it really makes me, it makes me cautious. 
it makes me very cautious. Despite the fact that this game is technically a bit easier than New Mystery, certainly on uh, Lunatic Reverse, right? Despite all that, I still feel as though I can more easily lose in this game because I can't count on a 90 to land. Like, not every time. Not every time, but if it was true, it I basically could, because what's what are the chances of a 99 missing in that game? If, if a 90 is basically a 99, then I can almost always assume that it will hit, and I can feel confident in taking slight risks. That, that doesn't mean I want to go out there when I'm trying to hit 50s and crap. But still, the fact that it skews the hit rates in your advantage just means that everything is way more consistent. Which is why I think the true hit should return, and I'm not entirely sure if the people behind the more recent games even really understand why true hit was there to begin with, honestly. Because why else would they remove it? Like, that's the only thing I can think of, is, they just, is that they just didn't understand why it was there. It's there to make it easier on the player to be aggressive. That's why True Hit exists. That was nothing. Because Leo's 94 there could have easily whiffed, and then I'm dead because this game is so hard. More to come. I really don't understand why they're going to make games harder and then make them less reliable in the same breath. It, it doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm complaining about nothing, but honestly, that's been something that's bothered me a bit uh, throughout this whole playthrough. Because, in all honesty, I feel like I've died less from... I, I died less in New Mystery, the harder game, from RNG shenanigans. It was almost always human error in that game. Whereas in this one, it just really depends. It honestly does. And that's a little bit disappointing. It's it's not it's not unbearable, but Well, I digress. I'm not even really explaining the gameplay at this point. So the reason we had Camilla smash into that guy at Mach 2 is because uh, we needed the Savage Blow for Leo. We're actually trying to do that intentionally so we can kick in that Pragmatic of his. We needed that extra little damage to clear the way for Dude. And she needs to be right here so that Elise can not die to the other mage. <laughs> the uh, Amaterasu actually brought her back to the point that she can still survive down in this room easily with no pair up. She's at a whole 17 HP, but that's all she needs. Trust, trust. I right, paired these two because we gotta move. We gotta move. There are gonna be reinforcements out the ass, and we are gonna try to beat all of them. <laughs> By beat, I mean outrun. We're not trying to defeat them. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. Now, let's use this iron bow. Fortunately, Mozu didn't get an early crit or anything like that, so we do have the shield gauge for this. Even if he wants to crit, it will be blocked. It will be blocked. There we go. Goodbye, kid. That's Mozu you're talking to. And also from this position... And with her, and with her having the toxic that she does, basically, uh, which in this case would be HP res, she can survive this mage even if she takes this enfeeble. She may or may not. It really just depends on how the game feels, honestly. <laughs> I haven't really, again, I haven't really determined how that works. But it's also because we have a lot of res ties as well, so I imagine that sort of increases the randomness to it all. Uh, now we dance for Leo, who could blow up this lightning guy. And he will block. And Lightning isn't particularly... Oh, this is the Ragnarok guy. Excuse me. We're leaving Lightning to Elise. That's correct. At any rate, this isn't particularly dangerous for Leo because, again, he's so goddamn tanky. The life taker on him is so... It's, it's so beastly because this guy literally cannot injure him for half. He can't do it. So, assuming that Leo can defeat an enemy that can't do half damage to him, he never has to worry about healing ever. And with his level of bulk, he'll never have to heal, ever. N not a single time. I do not believe that I'll ever have to stop this entire map to patch him up. And that's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> In a good way, though. It makes him it makes him fun. It honestly does. Uh, do we... How do we do this? Right, right. We, we will trade Camilla to the dual club. Or trade her off the dual club, rather. And we will attack stance with dude. Which is going to keep Elise safe. She's taking six from here and five from there. She's totally fine, but we do need to use Dude for this because she has that supportive ability, which is not only giving us extra damage, but also reducing the damage of that mate. Now, I guess if Dude didn't get enfeebled, we could probably just lightning this guy, but I kind of want to preserve the magic regardless. Yes, I do. Of course, we get hit by the 54, but hey, what else is new, right? <laughs> Anyways, we'll take this level up. Let's see more speed or something, man. Hey, asking you shall receive. Cool, cool. I don't know how much speed she really needs at this point. I'll keep it a buck. 
But speed is good. Speed is always a good stat. Now, ideally, Elise would kill this maid when it, yeah, when it decides to attack her. And in all honesty, she probably will. If she herself hits 170, that's all it'll take. There we go. So there's the free step gone. How we missed that? It kind of, it might have been a little bit sketchy because I do need to kill her. I'm so sure that I need to kill the free step guy. Now, we still take this fairly easily. This guy, of course, survives as well, but we don't really need health on Bozu for anything at this point. The last room is not going to be up to her. Not at all. It's going to be up to Camilla to smash the whole thing, I think. That's about where I'm at, man. She should be just about back. Yeah, she's, she's close enough. I think, actually, there was a little bit of leeway. Honestly, worst case scenario, I could just rally her, and then that would be just as good. Let me, let me double check this now. 92 is enough. Yeah, 92 is exactly enough. Like I said, <laughs> so we don't need that. We don't need that. Rally Man will get us there by himself. Speaking of, let's go ahead and rally right now. I do believe. Let's do it. And now we're going to have a slow open the door. By the way, I'm passing up both treasures. <laughs> this is a spy Yumi, I think. And this is a spy Shuriken, or maybe it's the other way around. Either way, I can never use either of them. It's not going to happen. So I don't need them, basically. Uh, that said... Camilla should be on full, yeah? Yeah, she's on full. Cool, cool. So, we're gonna trade out Nyx now. Like so. Okay, so this is the part of the map where it gets really sketch because I do not know what's gonna happen. I didn't think this far ahead, honestly. I just kind of assumed that it would work out, and we are going to find out very quickly. I'm going to hammer the hell out of this. We did rally, thank God. I <laughs> Actually, for a second, I thought I forgot. I won't lie. But, we blow away the wall. Some of these guys have inspiration. Didn't they? Oh, it's this guy, so maybe he comes in last. As long as he moves in last, which I think he does, honestly, I think we are fine. Now, I just need to be very careful with how I separate myself. Ophelia can come down here. These guys do not move, by the way. It will only be in range of the people for one more turn. I don't know if I want her that close, actually. But... No, Camilla will survive without Elise, I'm pretty confident. And if not, a defense tonic will fix that. Small mistake, let's call it. <laughs> But if Leo ends up here, that means Azora is here. We could drop Silas, who's probably going to be needed for some shelter stuff. Yeah, that works. Yeah, 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 that works. We just need to unpair basically everybody, because attack stance will be the key here on these next turns. Anyways, uh, in all honesty, I might just have Laszlo do it, just for the sake of leveling him up, honestly. Because if he actually gets to level 15, then he stops sucking because he will get shuriken fair, boosting him by 5 points. And at that point, he starts dealing something resembling damage. So I think that's what we want to try. I say so. I say so. And there's still enough space to separate. So let's get it, Laszlo! Of course he takes the hit head on, but he's not fighting anything else for the rest of the map, more likely than not. Which is actually a huge issue I've just processed, because that means that Mozu and he did not get any experience together. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, they will riot. They will for sure riot. I don't know. I don't know if I can take this. Why is he becoming better? I might have to change this weapon to look good by the end of the game. <laughs> oh man. But... Now we can do as we say, switch these two out. We want Percy there in the event that he takes the breeze. Because worst case scenario, he can still rally defense for more people that way. Ooh, wait, no, no, no. Here, here's, here's how this goes. Okay. We switch. Actually, we don't switch. We just straight up separate. And then we do one of the... No, at least help. There we go. So, Jin is going to take the hexing rod, but that's fine. Drop off your boy right there. In case we need to shelter on up. I feel that he and Selena got enough experience on those first two turns that after the next map they should be to A. There is one invasion and two kid paralogs that we should get. Which should in theory give us so. Yep, she can easily do this. Cool. That's what I was hoping to see. Now of course this guy's a joke, and he's actually helping me out a ton by the, using this Brave Lance. Unfortunately, I honest to god think that Camilla is so beefy that <laughs> some of the knights may ignore her. Which is not good. Obviously, it would be much better if she just did this to every single one, but alas. Oh, nice dodge. That could help us, although there's plenty of healers as well. So it's not as if she's in a lot of danger, really. Uh, here comes the spear, which is going to pop my gauge, unfortunately. 
I'm so sure she can get another one by the time it matters. I'm so sure she can. Oh, good. They all do attack her. Oh, maybe it's because she caught the Enfeeble. Oh, my God. Maybe this is best case scenario. Because she, she does res tie some other units, so it's possible that maybe she doesn't always get Enfeebled. If I'm really not worried about it, though, I just buy her a res tie. Well, mm, I don't know if I can reverse it at this point, actually. But... This is great, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. This is great. Now, as you can see, some of these guys are starting to come up from the rear, which is no good. Now, I gotta be really careful on this turn as well. Really, really careful. Okay, I will tell you what. We're gonna give Nyx to Ophelia. I'm not sure if I could have done this last turn or not, but I was not accounting for the fact that all of the generals would be able to die to Camilla, because I assumed that she would have enough defense to persuade some of them to not attack her but she didn't so she ended up killing all of them or, or the initial group basically she ended up killing a significant majority so by doing this no no, no I can't pair up but at any rate by doing this this guy should basically have zero yeah he has one one percent chance and you can see with life and death and so fear and really Really, a good number of spells could just end even this guy. Keep in mind, her magic would be higher as a sorcerer. We lost a good four or five, I think, by switching to a swordmaster. And she's not magic tonic to or anything, so... With life and death, and if I still had my Malefic Aura on, this guy would... He would have a 1% chance to hit me if he could. But that would assume that he could survive, which he couldn't, because it would be well over 58 damage. And granted, yeah, that's a Zerker, but she can do that to the majority of the enemies, especially if you can somehow set that up early on. At any rate, we're going to roll this 1%. Now, if I get hit by this, I'm out. Like, I'm I'm done. I'm as done as you could ever be. <laughs> so not today, please. Thank you. Good night. God, that duel is low. See, that's exactly why I didn't want to drop this. In the off chance that it came to something like this. So it's good that we did not. I'll take that Life Taker. She might want that on the next turn. I'm not entirely sure yet. What I do know is we're going to take Rally Man, pair himself up with Selena, and I'm going to rally all these guys. Every single one. That's fine. So this is how we do it. Dude, get to it. And she's going to be out of range of literally everything by the time all is said and done, so this is safe. Totally safe. Kill this one right now. I may have Leo take a pot shot at the other guy just for the sake of building up shield gauge a little bit more. I don't know how much it will matter. I do know that by getting into hands' range like this, we have triggered reinforcements. I'm pretty sure if you get in this guy's range, reinforcements spawn. I don't think it's hand specifically, so if I'm you, I would just assume that the second you get into the range of his group, so every area that is highlighted right now, basically, uh, prepare for reinforcements from the south, and they're they're really nasty ones as well. So keep that in mind. Now, Flora. Yeah, we still want to do this healing thing. We're going to heal back Camilla a little bit. Yeah, because she's a little bit too low for my taste. And this is where Silas comes in, I imagine, because we need to get her out of the way so that we have a spot for a good rally. Yes. Because I want Leo to get the speed. I want Leo to get the speed, because that'll let him double the Berserkers if they choose to go after him. So Silas, get to him, my man. Pick up Flora. And I guess we didn't really need... I guess we didn't really need Percy here. But you know, if that's going to be the case, maybe we can get a little bit cheeky. Maybe, just maybe, we can get a little bit cheeky. I doubt it, though. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. We made it this far. Let's go ahead and just win. How about that? How about we just try to win first, and then we can worry about style later. Coming for me, I don't think that means too much, does it? No, I don't really think I can afford to have him have a go at this guy because uh, Camilla needs to just smash him. Like, bottom line, she just needs to smash him. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Move here. For a second, I honest to God thought I forgot to switch them or something because I, I was tweaking, I was tweaking. But we need to lunge specifically so that we can prevent any enemy from getting to do it once we throw Leo out there, which is exactly what's going to happen right here. And I'm so sure he, he eats. Like, I'm, I'm positive he does. He eats easily. Just stay the hell out of hands' way. 
It's both counter and counter magic. I'm not sure I specifically said that, but there's just no way. Uh, with the horse spirit, though, he's fairly safe here. Yeah, Leo, my man, with the horse spirit. That's how we get stuff done right here. Without a doubt. Now, I'm almost kind of tempted to, like... Yeah, we want her in this tile. We want her in that tile right there. Hmm. Not 100% where Percy's gonna end up going, but this is this is fine. It's fine. It's fine. As long as we survive this one last round, we're fine. And thankfully, that is a. Oh god damn it! I just remembered something terrifying about this map. Wait, I think I might have killed Niles. No lie. I think I may have killed Niles because I just remembered something horrifying about those reinforcements. No, one of them comes with a free staff. The staff's a bot. So I guess in theory this is dangerous somehow. Probably Hans is honestly that strong. That he could have done 30 damage. I think that's what's going on. Oh, God damn it! <laughs> hmm. <laughs> well, I'm not rescue skipping the last map, right? So. <laughs> no, I forgot about that. I completely forgot about that. Because now he is. He's prime pickings for those mages, man. Uh, thankfully, we should... Okay, we were done anyways. And this is exactly the problem. This is exactly the problem. The Niles thing, okay, that's on me. But what was I supposed to do about a 6%? Honestly. Honestly, what could I have done differently? Well, okay, oh, bring his honor, rally like... No, screw his... I'm not gonna bring him just because these guys have 5% crit. Using a whole unit slot for that is absurd. That is unreasonable. That's completely unreasonable. And it kind of has to be Camilla, by the way. I don't know if I pointed this out. But this room is designed to kill anybody tanky who is not named Camilla. Because a lot of these warriors have hammers. The generals have beast killers. So it quite literally does need to be Camilla. There's not, there's not like an alternative to that. <laughs> and she can't even take a crit from these guys. She can't. And even if I gave her a luck potion, she would still have a chance to be crit. So it's not as if... Yeah, that is bullshit. I, I do not like this last room for that and that alone, honestly. It is not fair. It's not fair to get this far and then... <laughs> I know it sounds so salty. I don't care, man. This is... It is bullshit. Tell me it's not. Defend this. Defend this in the comments if you can. I, I want to see it. I want to see why this is good design. Please, oh please, tell me why 5% crit chances are a good design. I would love to know. God damn it, I'm so mad. <laughs> Well, at least Niles was dead anyways, so it's not as though... Uh, who designed this? Uh, I don't know that I should necessarily have to do this again, but here we are. Uh, <laughs> what can I say, though? Honestly, what can I say? I'm not sure what I could have done differently. That's not an exaggeration. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be cute. I really just don't know how I could have changed that for the better. <laughs> other than to not... Other than to just not... I'll let that happen, I guess. Other than to just not be crit. Because it kind of bears repeating. Beast killed her hammer. 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 <laughs> so, like, beast killer. I don't know. It shouldn't It shouldn't be like this. It shouldn't be like this. If they, if they just took the critical away from Berserkers entirely, then I wouldn't have gotten crit there. Because I'm pretty sure they have plus 10 crit, do they not? Cut in half for the enemy, of course, but... That would have been a one percenter, I guess... It's still technically possible, but if they're not going to have killer weapons, why do they have crit? I don't understand. I don't, and especially considering in this game, crit evade is worth less than ever. Like, one point of luck is not one point of crit evade, to my knowledge. So, I don't know, man. It can't be, because she has 22 luck, and they have 22 grit, so it's less than that. It must be. Yeah, yeah! Here's how we do it, I think. Is lightning better? Not particularly. Because here's the thing, I'm going to miss. That's, <laughs> I am for sure going to miss. It's not even a question in my mind. I, I've already missed. I've already missed just by thinking about it. So why would I... And the hammer's actually more accurate than anything. But if I did do that, that does technically free Azura. This is what you get for not bowing down to my might. Slug my balls, dude. You and your... Bullshit Berserker Brigade. Leo, don't you screw me, man. Leo, don't you screw me, man! <laughs> I hate this game.
This is the worst game I've ever played, honest to god. What was that? What was that? Somebody please explain to me what just happened. It looked like bullshit to me. I'm not sure if you guys... <laughs> oh my... Jesus. I guess it's not bullshit if I called it. <laughs> First of all, is this recording? It is, in theory. Secondly, this is the third time that I have now had to complete this map. Because for some reason, every time I'm about to win, OBS decides, no, 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 that's enough. We don't need to record anymore. So it, it stopped in this room two times now. Two times now. And I'm telling you guys this because you'll notice it anyways when we finish this up. I am going to do my best to splice in the original commentary after the map is complete uh, just because I know that you guys want to hear my thoughts initially right and you probably don't want me to be super salty about OBS being terrible so this is ridiculous I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have to do this three times I didn't want to do it one time <laughs> so that guy dies to Ophelia and I think what we're gonna do is have Camilla kill this guy like so right now easy 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 there's the damage we need on Hans. And there's all the damage we need on Hans. Once I switch Camilla to a better weapon. Which I could do with Percy. I didn't want to go about it this way. So the, the previous time, right? Uh, Hans ended up right here. And Mozu came through, took Arthur, and then blew him away. And that was amazing. Because she can just one round while next to Camilla with Arthur. Which is just awesome. Because <laughs> I was... I, I think I brought this up, but... Hans can't do anything to, uh, uh, he can't do anything against bows, basically, which is his big thing. Everything else is really dangerous, and you don't want to fight him on enemy phase, obviously, because of all those really nasty skills, but I think we know that by now. There's really no reason for me to repeat myself on that over and over again. That said, because it didn't work out quite as favorably, we do actually need to do this. We need to take this axe, and now we can kill Hans. No real alternative. If I miss another 32, then man, oh man. Or an 83, I mean, <laughs> a 32 would be fair. But an 83, come on now. So let's do Hans again. And I'm, I'm just constantly checking OBS. I'm sorry, but I, I'm not trying to do this a fourth time. I'm looking forward to wiping that smug look off your face. This is what you get for not bowing down to my might. Am I down to these nuts? Hopefully, 83% of the time. Thank you. Jesus. God damn. Defeated, how? No, it can't be. I was to be rewarded with power. So much power. No, 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 none of that. So we'll take that axe that we can never use. And now, 
I'm still gonna have Mozu take away. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have her take away. And Camilla dodged enough, which is good. I deserve that. In fairness, I deserved the dodge. But I, I would still like Mozu to take away Arthur. Or I guess it can be Flora in this case, because I probably should heal Percy, because I don't want him to die. Well, what I do know is that Elise, she got frozen, right? Yeah, she got frozen again. Uh, she can trade Niles over to Leo. We need to get him in range for that northwestern chest. Uh, not, not the one on the left-hand side, but the one in Iago's room, that is. So we switch, like so. Yeah, and then Silas can kill one of these free staffs. Not Silas, <laughs> I wish Silas. Leo can kill one of these free staffs, also putting himself in range. He's even going to dodge because he's a bro. Goodbye. We're out of range of the Berserkers, which is the only real fear of using the Calamity Gate here. And now it's just this last general, as well as Percy to think about. And we need to make damn sure that... We need to make extra sure that Mozu can take Arthur at some point. That's, that's like mandatory, which is pretty simple here. All you need to do in that case would be... Take him right now. Take his pot shot. It probably won't matter, but on, well, maybe it might because I think Dude would be able to kill with the chip. No lie. So let's yeah, let's do this. She could crit. Oh, that st it still wouldn't be a kill, would it? No, she did crit. Sweet. <laughs> I don't think that makes any difference, really. Uh, the only thing that changes, I guess, is now the slow could probably do that. Yeah, I might do that. And I don't feel bad about that because this is my third attempt. Well, not even my third attempt. This will be my third completion. Yeah, it would. So that's what we're doing. So we will trade the javelin over to dude who can use it because of the old arm scroll. Shelter on up. And I want to do that just so that I can rally, basically. Because I'll move here. Uh, I'll move here with Flora. Heal back Percy. Move rally man here. Rally. And then dude can just move here and throw a javelin. Easily finishing this armor knight. Easily finishing this armor knight. Truth be told, I think that Mozu chipping alone would have been enough. In hindsight. Well, if I if I had made this move first, it certainly would have been. But I... Honestly, guys, I'm just tired of this map. I really am. I really am. I shouldn't have... I, I don't know, man. It just... It didn't have to be like this, man. <laughs> now all we gotta do is stay out of her range, though. Like, that part is still mandatory, make no mistake. Yeah, so we dance, Silas. Uh, we move in again with Camilla. And what we're trying to do here is just make sure that everybody has a place to go if need be. Oh, no, no, no. Let's not get... Let's not move right there, though. Let's actually move right here instead, then separate. Shouldn't be able to be hit. I mean, we can, hit, we can be hit by the freeze, but we shouldn't be able to be hit by uh, too much else. And now, I feel like it was probably important to kill that one freeze made, though, because we're going to be eating four of them on this round. No lie. Four freeze back to back. So, that would not be ideal, to say the least. So, we just Sun Festival Percy. We rally him on up. And he should be good. He should be good right there. He has a billion crit evade. <laughs> he has a billion crit evade now, come on. And just to maximize our chances here, let's unpair Selena as well. And let's be done with this map. So there goes Camilla, but we just repair her. We just repair her. There goes Percy. We don't need him. We don't need him. There goes Azura. Yeah, they did that last time as well. And there goes Linda, pretty much. That's okay. That's okay. They couldn't have killed her no matter what, like I said. And with Percy being rallied like that, and somehow missing through a dang old, uh, <laughs> through the free step. Somehow. But that was a, that, that was a hit from the general. And he did no damage as we saw, so. Well, I mean, yeah, he did no damage. He missed. But you know what I mean. He didn't do a whole lot, regardless. So now we just do like this. We can open the door. Like so. Yep, that gauge worked out just as intended. I'm going to go ahead. I mean, it doesn't really matter who I pair with who, honestly. Well, we I, I guess we can do this. We'll, we'll pair Elise with Azura. We can dance from basically anywhere. We're going to give... Uh, we're going to give the poke now to 
Mozu. Because as you can see, she's going to have plenty of gauge here. And weirdly enough, oh man, maybe I could have gotten the Seraph Rope. I wasn't really counting on it. I don't need it for anything. But, yeah, I, I just really don't need it for anything at all, honestly. So I just, I would rather be safe than sorry. So Mozu can move here. And as you can see, she will be able to block any one hit from Iago at this point. Dude is well within range to seize. And uh, I tire of this. So, <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. This is really the best way to kill Iago, in my opinion. Not Mozu necessarily, but just blocking his attack. Because I, I don't know if I brought this up or not. But if that last room wasn't bad enough with the crits, the Excalibur has 25 of its own. And is super effective against all flyers. So, although Camilla is mandatory for this room, unless she should happen to land with a full guard by the time she has to kill Iago, then I don't really think that that's necessarily the best bet. Mozu, on the other hand, is unbeatable here. Oh, I missed the animations. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You impertinent traitor. Your ragtag group is no match for my army. Let your death serve as an example to all those who dare oppose King Garon. I will say that I'm glad I at least got to do some more Iago before this was, uh, <laughs> before this playthrough was over. Gah! This can't be happening! How could I lose? King Garon, please save me. No. 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 Still recording? Hey, we're actually still recording this time. So there's the Excalibur, which we cannot use, which is, yeah, I feel bad about missing that. I didn't in the first two tries. I didn't miss it before, but OBS had different plans, I guess. We're going to take this chest for 20,000 gold. We're going to get last minute chip experience here. Yeah. Unfortunately, I couldn't really do anything with uh, the likes of uh, Silas and Selena on this turn, but I needed the move. Ooh, that was kind of risky <laughs> because of that, but that's okay. I just wanted the sword rank, man. There's really no way to die there, I guess, though, huh? You know what, man? I wasn't going to get it, but let's just get it anyways. There's the Bifrost. It's bad. It's really bad. Uh, dare I even attack with Percy? I mean, he can't miss possibly, but this is Pavis or Aegis? It's actually Aegis, so I can kill this guy with Percy for the experience, I think. I don't see why not. There we go. Experience on Percy. Level up even. Nice. This would be a good one. Strength, speed, defense. <laughs> Wham! Biff! Pow! <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, and last minute heals, I guess. Let's use the mend. It's less valuable. Yeah, makes sense to me. Never return here. Again, on that right-hand chest within Niago's room is a... A Seraph Rope. A Seraph Rope. So that would have been good, but... I much prioritized the win. So now, how are we going to edit this to make it not noticeable? Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, honestly, what can I even add about this map at this point? Now, I think at the beginning of this recording, I had a theory that people who really didn't like this probably went the left route. But now, having played it more recently, I have a new theory, if you can believe it. <laughs> so that last room is bullshit, obviously. Ultimate bullshit in the worst possible way, because... Oh, hiccups, man. Because Camilla is actually the only person that can feasibly tank the point. As we saw, there is nothing but hammers and beast killers. And critical hit berserkers. And by the way, wouldn't you know it, Camilla has awful luck by herself. And yeah, there's Percy, but I don't really feel like that's a viable solution. I don't think that's an excuse because there's there's a good chance it gets frozen for one because his resistance is probably terrible unless you gave him a magic mom or something like that. So if he gets frozen out of position, like what can you do? You have to use two units then just to prevent single digit crit rates. Which shouldn't even be a factor to begin with, honestly. I don't like when enemies have single-digit crits for no reason. It's one thing if a unit has, like, awful luck. I mean, like, Noel level in Fire Emblem 8. The guy who quite literally starts with zero luck. Okay, fine. If enemies have crit rates on him, I understand. Michalis, somebody else who has horrible luck. Fine, give him crit rates. Whatever. But why is one of my standard units at risk of death? from something totally random like that. And it, it would be different if it was like 10, 15, 20%, because then it's, again, a consideration at that point. But what is 6%? And it, it would have been 3% on the replay, because I actually did buy her a luck tonic. But when it's low like that, 
what can you do other than not be unlucky? Honestly, and it has to be Camilla again because beast killers and hammers everywhere, everywhere. And I wouldn't mind that so much. I wouldn't mind that so much. I, I guess it could be dude as well, right? To be fair, or any really tanky wyvern. But the bottom line, it has to be one of those kind of classes, or maybe like a hero with soul if you feel like rolling those dice. But it can't really be too many different units. There's not really a whole lot of great infantry that's ultra tanky. I mean, Arthur's pretty tanky, but do you really want to use him in a case of fighting enemy berserkers? I really don't think you do. <laughs> the other cool thing about this map, though, was how we were constantly repairing and unpaying ourselves like that. And that was intentional. I wasn't just doing that for the hell of it. It's because, as I, I think I explained this a little bit, but basically when we do that, we're giving not only two separate targets to potentially draw away all these status devs, but the only way to... Have a unit left behind in that case is for the two people who are adjacent to each other be frozen at the same time. They would have to both be frozen. Because if not, then one can just repair with the other and move on that way. And that's why somebody like Arthur was even paired with Niles at the beginning of the map. Because I knew we had to move our ass on this map. You can see very clearly that those reinforcements are out for blood, man. And unless you have some kind of god squad, I don't really see the... I don't really see uh, where it's a great idea to necessarily try and fight them. Especially with those maids popping in with free staff as well, because that's going to take your avoid. Even if you had like a really good Kaze or something, he's still not going to want to take every hit head on. You know what I mean? So I think that your best bet really is to be quick on a map like this. Sort of like how most of the maps in New Mystery are, in fact. I'm sure you could defeat all the reinforcements, but it's surely much harder than just not. So I do like how the game rewards you for moving quickly on this map, uh, by allowing you to win, basically, but on the other hand, that last room is just crazy. I don't even want to say it's crazy, because it would be totally fine if not for the fact that you can just fall over at any point regardless of skill. If anything, Hans should have been the only one with a real crit rate, but I digress. We are done here. Never return! Ah! No, no, please! I don't want to die! This it's over, now. Iago. Have some dignity and let me finish you off quickly. Spare me. Please, I lady dude. Spare me! Have mercy! All we did was follow King Garon's orders, just like you! If you don't like our tactics, blame him! Punish him instead! Oh, don't you worry, Iago. I'm innocent. Innocent, I say! You wouldn't kill an innocent man, would you? Maybe. Yeesh, this is getting embarrassing. How low are you going to stoop, Iago? Tell him, Leo. Lord Leo, I've known you since you were a child. As wise as you are, surely you understand the awful situation I'm in. Please, my lord, spare me. Tell your army how absurd it would be to kill me. Such a nuisance. You're an eyesore, Iago. A cruel fiend who deserves nothing but a blade at your neck. I haven't any mercy to spare for someone like you. Oh, get it, Leo. You are not but a spineless coward who brings shame upon our beloved Nor. These are your final moments. I suggest you muster up some dignity for them. Ah! Lord Leo, no! You can't! You- Contemptible fool! For all the pain you have caused, to hell with you! I'm saying- <laughs> Why is Leo actually the best character? Gah! But you know guys, I gotta keep it a buck. If I'm being 100% honest with you guys, I think I'm gonna miss him. <laughs> I think I got really into it, Yago, for some reason. Like, I've- I've done voices like that in the past, but Iago sort of evolves into his own thing. And, well, what can I say? He will be missed. But, as Leo would imply, it is done. Leo. Thank you, Leo. That guy was really starting to get on my nerves. <laughs> yeah, tell me nothing. about it. It was nothing. It actually feels really nice knowing he's out of our lives. Hero fire! That's our Leo, always thinking of the big picture and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Good work, brother. Now no one remains who can harm our precious dude. Hmm. Yes, this was truly our final battle. For sure, absolutely. There's no way that anything else can happen after this point. Hey. Dude, I think it's time for Endgame. I know, Azura, I know. Everyone. Everyone, I need to tell you something. Hmm? Oh, what's that? Yeah. The war isn't over just yet. There's still someone we must defeat before our world can know peace. What? Out with it, dude! No. I'm sorry, but that person is King Garon. <clears throat> father. Why? You, you can't really be telling us to kill our own father, can you? Me, a murderer in cold blood? I only kill for good reasons, like protecting your honor, dude. It's awful. That's a horrible thing to say, Camilla. 
Why would you say, I'm sorry. Why would you say something like that, dude? I know he's really rough around the edges, but together we can change him. It can't be. Explain yourself, dude. You have our attention. Okay, this isn't going to be easy to hear, but hear me out. You have to know, I fought so hard and sacrificed so much for this moment. I lost Lilith, Ryoma, even myself to an extent, just to make it this far. I did all that so I could show you, my family, the truth about Father. And what is this truth of which you speak? Yeah. Father, King Garon. Oh man, how should I put it? He's a slime monster. <laughs> Everybody just turns on it's like, oh no, nope, she's lost her mind. Better kill her too. Just say Iago and dude killed each other. I agree. Uh, he's no longer human. He has become a monster, kept alive by someone or something truly unholy. Very similar to that final room in that map. Truly unholy. There's no way to save him at this point. Defeating him is our only option. <sighs> That's impossible. You must be joking. A slime monster? Come on. Who do you take me for? I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, Xander, but I'm dead serious. They call me dead ass dude. I had a hard time believing it myself, but I swear it's the truth. I can prove it to you, too. The truth about our father lies beyond those doors. Listen. Please, follow me. Let's go, Azura. We've waited long Truly. enough. As you wish, dude. Anyways, I don't really think there's too much else I really need to add about that at this point. Uh... I like the map in concept. I do. I just... <sighs> you know what they need to do? They need to make a mode where everybody hits everybody all the time. You can even have lunatic stats for all I care. Just make it like the mode beyond lunatic. And then <laughs> if you really want to, add like a lunatic plus or whatever beyond that. But give me a mode where everybody hits everybody at all times. Just That would just be great. An RNG free mode. Even take it from like... Steal, it, steal the name from Devil May Cry or something. Call it Heaven or Hell. And I know that I, that's not what that is in that game. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, which probably most of you, I assume, uh, in Devil May Cry, there is a mode past the hardest difficulty called Heaven or Hell, where you and your enemies both kill each other in one hit. And obviously that wouldn't work for Fire Emblem, but you can make it so that at least there's no RNG, and you can't possibly rely on dodge strategies, and I think that that would be fun. It'd be fun for me, I don't like missing, I don't know, do you guys like missing in Lunatic mode, where it's probably a death no matter what? Because even if you played defensively, it's not as if you're suddenly not to it KO'd just because you were turtling. Or playing really safe. Not, turtling and playing cautiously isn't the same thing, but you know what I mean. Just because you play defensively does not automatically prevent the game from screwing you, so it's like... What can you do when you just have bad luck? I think that if lunatic modes are going to be as hard as they are, there should be something... There should be something to sort of mitigate that bullshit factory. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm complaining about nothing. Maybe everybody else just says, Oh no, I love missing six turns into a really tough map. I would love RNG in these games. Maybe I'm the crazy one. I do not know. But what I do know is that that is going to do it for me. So thank you for watching. I hope that you all enjoyed. If you did, please consider leaving a like rating. Helps me out tremendously. Let me know your thoughts as well down below. I'm sure you guys have plenty of experiences with this map that you would just love to share. <laughs> God knows I would if I was watching. Man, if I was watching somebody else do this map, I would just love to tell them about the time I won but then lost because Camilla has no luck. <laughs> Anyways, I will catch you guys next time. See you then. Peace.